Hello, my name is Paul. I'm the developer of Hyperion Synth. This video is part of a series of tutorial videos that I am making about Hyperion. In this video, I want to cover the basics of sound patching and modulation control. If you're not familiar with modular synthesis, Hyperion might feel a bit confusing at first, so I suggest to begin with that you take a look at the init patches. You can filter the patch list by the type and select init. And a great example that I've added is the init training patch. In the init training patch, you can see all the major categories of synth nodes that Hyperion has. There are orange nodes, which are the per voice control data nodes the purple nodes which are all voice control data nodes and these affect all the voices at the same time there are blue nodes which are the audio processor or generator nodes and those are per voice nodes so they're polyphonic and there are effects bus nodes those are the green nodes and those process the mix of all of the voices that is summed at the audio out node you can also see in this patch animated windows showing a graph of the data coming from various output pins. These are also control data nodes, but they're special value viewing nodes. The value viewer nodes help you to get a better understanding of what's going on inside a patch. Here you can see that we've got four voices that are active, and you can see that the LFO trace is showing four different waveforms that are running in parallel. If I press keys, you'll see the voices numbers get updated with the output frequency from the notes input node and also the MIDI note values. You can also see on the trace that's connected to the ADSR1 output, the envelope that's controlling the main audio output level. Each time I hit a note, a new envelope is triggered. If I play fast enough, because the release time of the envelope is quite long, the envelopes will get re-triggered because I've only allocated four voices in this patch. If I increase the number of voices, you can see immediately that the number of traces on the graphs goes up and the number of voices shown in the text value viewer nodes also increases. To learn about what's going on in a patch, you can click on the nodes themselves and it will open up the node edit panels for each corresponding node that you click on. But you can also click on the node info tabs. And if you do that, when you click on a node, you'll see a description that's specific to each node. And you can scroll through and see a little bit more information about what's going on. Another way to find out what's happening in the patch is to I like the input and output pins and look at the tooltip that appears just under the oscilloscope view. And this shows you the name of the control output or input pin. And it tells you whether it's an input or an output. And it tells you its value range. When you want to adjust the mix of what the various control inputs are doing to one of the input pins, you can click on the input pin for that node, and you can see that the Mod Sources Mixer tab gets opened up. I can change the levels of each of the sources, and that can affect the 
mix of the different values that are coming in and affecting the filter cutoff in this in this case. So you can see when I turn up the LFO, the filter is being changed a lot more. And if I turn it down, it's much more subtle. You can see also that the individual voices are being affected by the envelope from ADSR2. And I also have a macro receive input. And if I pin the macro receives area, you can see that I can change the macro receive amount that's affecting also the filter cutoff. If you look at the node edit panel for a particular node, you can see that some of the values, like the cutoff in this example, are input pins, but they're also values that you can set the initial value of within the node edit panel. And so the modulation sources will affect the offset from that initial value. So if I turn down all the sources on the filter, you'll see that the filter value is close to 0.47. And that means it's got a swing of just around a half in each direction. And you can see that the LFO currently has a output level of one. So if I turn the level of the LFO up to halfway, you can see that we're already hitting the maximum modulation range of the filter. I can also adjust the LFO output level directly within the LFO, but it's handy to be able to use the mix controls because you might want to have multiple targets for the same modulation source. So that covers basic patching. Let's talk about some of the node copy and paste operations that are available. If you right click on a node, you can see a contextual menu that pops up where you can select nodes or you can disable and, and enable them. You can trigger the edit parameters and you can also delete the node. But if you just select the node and then you go to the icons at the top right, you can copy and paste those nodes that you've selected. You can use the tab key to select nodes. And when they're selected, you can use the copy and paste buttons at the top here to copy them and paste them into a different layer if you want to. Or you could duplicate them or delete the selected nodes. And sometimes it's useful to select all of the nodes in a patch so that you can just move around the whole node tree to make space for something else that you want to place on the graph. To clear the selections, just click anywhere else on the node graph. If you want to start adding nodes, right click on the graph and a pop up menu appears with the different available nodes sorted into different categories. We've got voice generators. We've got voice processing, voice audio mixing, per voice control nodes, all voice control nodes which affect all the voices at the same time, MIDI nodes, data viewing nodes, which are the ones I talked about earlier, data processing nodes, generators, and effects bus nodes. A couple of the most important nodes in this list are the audio output node. You need one on your graph if you want to hear anything. The MIDI note input node, you need one if you want to use a MIDI source. And the effects bus audio output node, you need one on your patch to hear the output from any of the effects in the effects bus. 
So to learn what's going on, I suggest you simply open up the init training patch and start clicking on the individual nodes and playing with the different parameters. And you can hear and see the results of what's going on. You could add more data viewing nodes. You could add more control nodes and start affecting things. In the next video, I'll go into a little bit more depth about some of the individual nodes and talk about some of their special features and some of the tips and tricks that I have to help make patch designs more interesting. <laughs>